Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the at override annotation. I'm going to go and open up my website here to javacjava.com got my pop-out menu, select Java OOP Tutorials, which is my Java object-oriented programming tutorials page. I'll scroll down here to at override annotation. The at override is an annotation. An annotation does not change the way your program works, but rather it flags the compiler to be on the lookout for a special condition. When you override a method in a subclass, it is a good idea to include the at override annotation on the line before the method signature. The at override annotation flags the compiler that the following method is overriding a method in a superclass. If that method does not exist in the superclass, the compiler will generate an error. Discovering an error when overriding a method saves a ton of time, especially if the overloaded method has a small typo in the name. An even better reason for including the at override is to flag someone else who is looking at your code that the method is in fact an overridden method. Without the annotation, the only way to know would be to peck and hunt through the food chain of superclasses. I personally absolutely love it when I see the at override in Java code. It tells me right off the bat that the programmer who wrote the class had the foresight and took the time to be thorough. Let's go ahead and scroll down here to the code and we'll highlight all this. Hit Control C copy or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen here. I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by going new shortcut, type in CMD, next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's open up the command prompt, type in Java C. You should see a whole bunch of scroll, stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on the installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing on. Type in CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash CD is short for change directory backslash tells us to go to the root. And then we're going to type in MD, which is make directory Java, right? I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. We'll go ahead and change to the Java folder. I'm going to create a new directory and I'm just going to call this at override. We'll change directories to the add override folder. And I'm going to do notepad app override.java. Control V to paste. Come up and save this. Okay, so I've got four classes in this um, at override.java source code file. And basically, we've got a class grandparent with a display message method, a void um, return type, and no parameters. It's just gonna display to the console invoking the method from the grandparent class. Okay, and then we've got a class parent that extends grandparent, right? And we're going to override the display message method. And here's the at override annotation, which basically says, okay, the next this what's coming up next is the is a method that is overridden um, we're overriding a method from the parent class from the uh, sorry super class right so this is the subclass and this is the super class so at override says that there's got to be a void display message same signature here with the class name and the, and the parameters and the same return type so there's got to be one up in here okay if there isn't, it'll go ahead and display a message. And basically, the parent one is just going to display to the console, invoking the method from the parent class, right? Now, the child is going to extend parent, so this is the subclass, and this is the superclass. So, at override tells us that, hey, this next method that's coming up here after this line is going to be um, a method that is being overridden from the superclass. So, and sure enough, we've got the same method signature, display message on the name there, no parameters, and the return type. And it just simply displays to the console, um, invoking the method from the child class. Okay, 
Simple enough. I've learned all about that over the last few tutorials. So let's go up here and then my class at override, I've got my main method entry point and I'm executing three statements here. So I'm just using the new operator. I'm not even creating a reference variable. So the first, first one goes ahead and uses the new operator to create an instance of a child object and then invoke its display message method, right? Which comes down here and displays this. The next one creates a new parent, new instance of a parent object and a reference to that and then uses the dot operator to display, call its display message method. And the third one creates a new grandparent instance of a grandparent object, a reference to that instance per se, and uses the dot operator to invoke its display message method. Okay, very simple. We're going to run this. I'll show you what it, what it does and then we'll go ahead and change a few things and show you how that works and how much time it can save. So let's go ahead and compile that and run it. And we get invoking the method from the child class, invoking the method from the parent class, and invoking method from the grandparent class. Okay, now, um, let's say for example, we didn't have this app override in here. No big deal. We can still save this, we can still compile it, and we, it'll still run the same way. So it's completely optional, right? And now let's say for example, when I created this, I just left one of the S's out, right? Or maybe, uh, maybe I was talking to a coworker, but my mouse was sitting here focused on that S, right? And I accidentally like hit the backspace key and didn't even realize that I changed the code or something like that. And then, you know, it was just like, oh, let's just compile this, right? And so, of course, that still compiles just fine. You might go, what? Wait, hold on just a second. We can still run it just fine. And now look what happens. Invoking the method from the parent class, invoking the method from the parent class, and invoking the method from the grandparent class. What? You know? Now we got to scratch our head and go, wait, hold on just a second. What is going on here? New child dot display message. Okay, I'm coming down here and I don't see it right off the bat. You know, I'm not recognizing this, but we have a display message that we inherited from the sub super class, right? And it's this right here, and that's why it's invoking that. Because this, because we have a little typo on this S down here, it's going ahead and invoking this one here. Now you can imagine if your class actually, you know, did something important and really screwed something up, then you'd be in some deep trouble. So, what happens here if, um, I go ahead and put my at over, override back in here. I go ahead and save this and we recompile it here. I'm gonna clear the screen. Oh, we get an error right off the bat. Method does not override or implement a method from a super type. And that's pointing to the at override there. And we come down here, we're like going, what? Wait, hold on just a second. And you're like, oh, oh, I see it. Oh crap, that was stupid. I missed an S on there, right? So trust me, this just this taking five seconds and save. Well, anyway, I will come back to that here in a second. My final thoughts there. So if we save that, right, then we go up here and we compile it, and everything looks just great, and we run it, and we're good to go again. Okay. So that is the purpose of the override there. And trust me, this this mistake is made so many times um, that Java actually chose to you know make this part of the compiler and put in an annotation just specifically for that and it just it's so valuable and saves you so much time okay I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this close out of that and leave you with some final thoughts there so um, I didn't include the optional at override in some of my previous tutorials because I try to leave as many optional features out of my tutorials until a time when I can explain the proper implementation you know we have to build up to it right um, now, writing the optional at override annotation only takes five seconds, but it saves a hundred times that in future headaches. It is a good habit to make. I 100% recommend you do it every time and just get in the habit of it and do it. So, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.